Our next speaker is Suzanne DeSaley. Suzanne is the General Manager of National Operations at Mates for Mates. Mates for Mates is a veteran service organization. Susan has a background in clinical psychology and has worked in the mental health sector for the past 21 years. Speaking on equine therapy, Suzanne DeSaley. So today I'm going to be talking about our equine therapy program um, or the healing power of horses. But just very quickly, a little bit about who Mates for Mates is. Um, so we're a veteran services organisation that provides a range of physical rehab and psychosocial support services to current and ex-serving um, Australian Defence Force members who've sustained a either a physical or a psychological service-related injury, um, but also provide services to their families as well. Um, we were established in 2013 by RSL Queensland and we predominantly deliver our programs through family recovery centres. Um, we currently have uh, family recovery centres in Townsville, Brisbane, Hobart. We have various outreach locations and many of our programs can be accessed nationally. All of the programs that we offer at Mates and Mates can be accessed by the veteran or the current serving member and their families and I think that's very much been a theme over the last few days of the importance of that. Um, so we provide physical rehab and wellbeing services. We have exercise physiologists that provide a range of one-on-one -on -one and group-based interventions, um, psychological support services, a lot of social connection activities um, that really promote the importance of peer support and our skills for recovery programs. So under our skills for recovery programs, we offer the STAIR program and you heard John talk about that this morning. Um, we offer various um, employment and education support service programs um, through our partnership with RSL Queensland. Um, and we also run our um, equine program, which I'm gonna be talking about today. Uh, that's just a little graphic around our impact, but I guess just the most important thing there, back in 2018, last year, we had over 26,000 um, face-to-face contacts nationally. But um, for us, why equine therapy? Now, I'm not gonna go into um, detail about um, the mental health issues, particularly post-traumatic stress in the veteran population. We've talked about that um, over the last couple of days, and we know, though, that those issues are well-documented, but we also know that partners of veterans are very much also vulnerable to psychological distress. Um, and we also know that there's a stigma often associated with um, accessing traditional psychological support services, um, and that has very much led to a growing interest in what we call, I guess, adjunct or complementary therapies or interventions. Now, there is a lot of um, research base in equine therapy, um, and it is suggesting that it can help manage um, or help people manage anxiety, depression. It can help build trust and confidence and also enhance social skills. Um, but the majority of the research that... Um, we found to date is uh, very much focused on child and adolescent populations and there's very limited research on veteran populations. There is more in Canada and the US and the UK um, but I guess we're very much wanting to sort of add to that paucity of research here in Australia. But I guess what is it about horses? Um, anyone who's ever spent any time with horses um, will know how special they are and what special animals they are. Um, as prey animals, uh, horses have very highly developed levels of awareness um, and the ability to sense their surroundings, so very in tune with their surroundings. And horses very much apply this level of perception and awareness uh, in their interactions with people. Uh, so they're experts at reading body language um, and also perceiving human conditions and therefore they very much respond um, to us as unique individuals. So very much working with horses is like holding a mirror up to yourself. Uh, our equine program, so we um, run the equine program in conjunction with Equine Encounters Australia. Um, they're a, a great organisation and have been our partner for many years now. Um, all of the facilitators at Equine Encounters Australia are certified with the Equine Psychotherapy Institute of Australia's uh, model of equine assisted learning. Um, it's a five-day residential program. Um, so the structure of the program is that there's two facilitators from um, Equine Encounters Australia and one of our psychologists goes along for the full program. There are eight program participants um, per program and we also deliver it so we have individual programs um, provided to the, to the veteran or the current serving member but we also have couples programs as well. Um, we've 
usually deliver between six and eight programs per year, so we've probably delivered to over about 350 participants so far. Uh, we deliver in locations across Australia, so we have programs running in Cairns, uh, Canungra in southeast Queensland, the Hunter Valley and the Yarra Valley, um, and next year we're also hoping to expand that to South Australia and Northern Territory. All of the, the sessional work um, that occurs, and I should say before that um, the, the work that um, our psychologists and EAA do um, is very much within a sort of a traditional framework, a traditional therapeutic framework, very much b uh, based on relational gestalt therapy. And all of the sessional work is experiential and based around learning new skills in order to create um, social engagement. So the therapeutic work is integrated throughout the activities by inviting participants to notice and explore their issues or challenges and build awareness of their responses. So build awareness of things like fear and anxiety and anger. Uh, as the work is based on uh, gestalt therapy, participants are never asked to recount or uh, revisit their past experiences or trauma. Instead, all the observations are very much kept in the present, in the here and now. Uh, additionally, there's group discussions are, are a big part of the program uh, and these provide participants with the opportunity to very much process um, and reflect on their experiences of the activities throughout the day and also allows inquiry and observation from the program facilitators. Now, what comes as a surprise to many participants is that you don't get on the horse, it's not riding at all and many people come back very surprised by that. Um, all programs are run from working horse properties. Um, uh, and as I said before, um, our, the only sort of difference really in the structure of the program for our couples programs is the addition of some um, uh, couples sort of activities. They, they go on dates every night and there's some various counselling activities um, that the couples um, have that the individual programs don't. Um, this is a little bit difficult to see, but it just talks about some of the... Um, I guess activities, the daily activities and the purpose of each of those. So there's herd meets and there's lots of groundwork and grooming and liberty works and trail walks, mindfulness. Um, so these are all of the, the, I guess, the sort of the, the tools that the therapists um, on the program use. Through our um, uh, relationship with uh, wonderful colleagues at the Gallipoli Medical Research Foundation, we um, evaluated um, our program um, back in 2016. So the program was evaluated by Dr. Madeline Romanuik, who madly was here yesterday, but she couldn't be here today. Um, and the title of the evaluation was the Evaluation of Equine Assisted Therapy Program for Veterans Who Identify as Wounded, Injured or Ill and their partners. Maddie uh, evaluated 10 of our programs back in 2016. So we had a total of 47 participants, 25 of those on the individual program, um, 22 in the couples program. Uh, this excluded um, current serving members who were on the program. It was only looking at ex-serving ADF members. Um, the design of the program, it was a non-controlled within subjects longitudinal design, uh, but we did, uh, Maddie did do a between subjects, was also conducted just to compare the outcomes of the individual um, and couples program. So um, there was a DVA ethics approval was received, uh, was um, uh, obtained for this. Uh, the measures that we that Maddie used um, uh, at pre, at post, and then three months following program completion was the, the PCL5, um, the DAS21, the Oxygenous Happiness Scale, and uh, the Quality of Life measure. I will um, just go through these results, just go to the summary um, section. Um, so basically, the analysis of the individual program indicated that symptoms of uh, depression, anxiety, stress and uh, post-traumatic stress significantly reduced and participants' self-reported happiness and quality of life significantly increased from the beginning of the program to the conclusion of the program. However, results also demonstrated that these gains were, were short-term with scores on all measures except anxiety returning to pre-intervention levels at the three-month um, post-follow-up. Analysis of the couples program indicated that symptoms of depression, stress, post-traumatic stress significantly reduced by the conclusion of the program and this reduction remained three months later. So this analysis also demonstrated a gradual reduction in anxiety symptoms from pre-intervention 
resulting in a significant reduction um, at the three-month follow-up point. So, and participants self-reported happiness and quality of life significantly increased from the beginning of the conclusion of the program, although this increase um, did not remain at three months later. So, I guess when comparing the participants um, in the couples and individual programs, both veterans and partners who completed the couples program recorded uh, sim significantly less symptoms of depression, stress and post-traumatic stress three months following the conclusion of the program despite no difference prior to commencing it. Uh, in addition, significantly fewer participants in the couple program uh, met provisional diagnoses for PTS um, at follow-up compared to participants of the individual program. So I guess um, just uh, sort of in summary, I guess it could, it, the results of this is very much, um, could be possible or it could indicate that the couples program is very much facilitating greater psychological outcomes long term than the individual program. Um, and I guess there are many reasons for, for this and we've given a lot of thought and and a lot of research. So um, I guess as the couples programs includes involvement of the veterans partner, this perhaps indicate that it, uh, indicates that all of those adaptive coping strategies developed uh, during the program um, can be rehearsed and reinforced with the partner once the program concludes, thus leading to some ongoing sustainability um, of those psychological symptoms. Um, so you, this is also in line with previous literature um, that suggests um, incorporating a loved one into the program is really important. So the couples program also included, um, as I said before, some additional couples strategies within the intervention, like couples dates and couples counselling. So the difference might also be um, influenced by the improved quality of those intimate relationships, um, which you know we know has um, can be associated with better mental health comes gen uh, uh, mental health outcomes generally. So I guess um, for us, we very much took those learnings around you know the importance um, and the better outcomes long term that we saw when we include. Um, the veterans partner. So we have taken that, um, we are looking and we have um, over the last couple of years increased the number of couples programs that we offer. Um, we encourage more of our veterans if they have a partner to do the program with their partner as opposed to doing it on their own. Um, we are looking at trialling some family programs, so looking at um, incorporating, um, looking at the family broader, so not just um, their partner, but parents and children and siblings. Um, we've also developed a bit of a buddy program for those veterans who don't have partners and are just doing the individual program to actually buddy up with someone else on the program um, to have that sort of more consistent check-in so that reinforcement can happen for them as well. Um, and we're also looking at, we've got three years of data since 2016 that we are looking at analysing and really sort of, I guess, doing a bit of a deeper dive into that and seeing what, um, what the results have been over the last couple of years um, and I think it's really important that um, I guess we uh, you know make aware that we're very happy to be talking to first responders also around delivering this program because there's great synergies between the defence and first responder cohort so very happy to talk to anyone um, who might be interested in our model for the program and delivering it in your agencies um, but I guess I'll just um, finish up by letting you know I was in one of our um, family recovery centres up in Townsville a couple of weeks ago and I ran into one of the veterans who had just done the program and I asked him you know how it went um, and he said to me he said you know Suzanne I often hear um, people talk about horse whisperers you know those people who can sort of have those affinity with horses and he said to me he said you know what I sometimes think it's the horse who whispers so of course our um, marketing team have now jumped on that and that's all over our um, promotional campaigns but I think that it really just showed um, a lot of that insight into um, uh, the horse and the power and very much the healing power of horses. Um, so as I said, happy to talk to anyone who has any um, questions about the program or might be interested in um, you know, uh, us delivering a program within your workforce. Thank you.